Beauty and harmony. Governed by one eternal law. All that begins must end. The reign of the old shogunate is over. The saga of the Sengoku Jidai is a well-known tale. Warring families tear the nation apart, then rebuild it anew in their own fashion, with the Tokugawa family eventually taking control. But what if things had gone differently? In the game Shogun Total War 2 by Creative Assembly and Sega, we can recreate the Sengoku Jidai and see alternate histories played out. In this series, I aim to bring you two campaigns interspersed with original narrative so as to write two alternate histories. The time has come for a new warlord to become Shogun! We will control the Oda clan, the workhorse of the Tokugawa peace, and rewrite history to give them the glory they deserve. But they won't be the only clan looking to change the past. The Takeda, master horsemen led by the great Takeda Shingen, will also be trying to make the Sengoku Jidai end their way. I'll be playing as both clans in two simultaneous campaigns. In our two alternate histories, which clan will be successful? Who will be first to conquer Japan? Find out in The Eternal Law. Other lands have always provided for our people. Our enemies are many and envious. They threaten our borders and look for any weakness. Others may cover titles, but Ashigaru, common spearmen, are the bedrock of order might. All know us, the commanders of a thousand spears. It is an honor to lead such a man. Our generals are battle-scarred veterans of a righteous strength. Isha Mountain, the war god has awoken. Now is the time to defeat our enemies! All will bow to the other clan. We wait no longer. Destiny calls! You have all heard of Tokushike's rebellion. We are not the only clan to be beset by such treachery. All over the land clans follow my lead in preparing for war. That war you see is now unavoidable. You must all be of one mind from now on. Pay no heed to those rumors of the Namban and their supreme god. Focus on your duty to Oda, and we can end this war before it even reaches a running pace. Ready your blades to quell the rebellion. So welcome to Oari Province. We can see here we have rebel forces on the left and the Oda clan forces on the right. But first, the first thing you have to do in a Shogun Total War campaign is to select your mastery of the arts. This is like research. Uh, you have your samurai attempt to have some intellectual endeavors. And which ones you choose uh, will determine the fate of your clan. I've started by studying Bushido, a key thing for the coming war. Here are the enemy forces uh, led by a rebel member of the Oda family. Here is Oda Nobuhide, the daimyo himself, and here is a small field army we have started off with, led by one of my loyal generals, mostly uh, spear units. Here we can see the status of the clan. In the bottom left are our, our political situation, uh, some details of the economics too. More interestingly, here is the family tree. Uh, so these are the people who actually make up our clan. Here is Oda Nobunaga. He's only 12 years old, so he can't really take part in the game at the moment. But he'll age and appear later on. Here's the general I just mentioned. And Nobuhide was at the top with his wife. Here is my castle at the center of Oari, my stronghold. From here I can recruit new troops into the Oda army. 
I have a variety of options but I'm going to start off by recruiting some Ashigaru swordsmen to complement the mostly spear based forces that we have begun with. Additionally I can choose building options to construct infrastructure and uh, new additions to the castle at Owari in order to uh, unlock new potential for future development. Uh, options here include building stables, archery ranges, uh, sake dens, uh, markets soon enough. We can also just make the castle bigger here which provides a large variety of benefits however it increases the food consumption uh, of your clan. So I won't be able to do that until I've upgraded my farms which I currently can't afford. So for now I'm going to upgrade the road system. A very important thing for beginning a military campaign. So now Oda Nobuhide is going to join the field army that's already assembled and march off to fight with the rebel member of the Oda family. Many campaigns start this way where you have to uh, first unite your own province. We will be uniting Awari in the coming battle. And so on a hill not far from our castle the rebel forces begin assembling a formation atop a small hill. They've placed a division of archers in front of a division of Ashigaru spearmen who are forming some sort of phalanx formation atop the hill. It is clear that they are going to wait for us to come up the hill and fight them rather than come down and fight us. They also have here this unit of light uh, spear armed cavalry and here in the center of them is the man himself, the great traitor of the Oda family. Now somewhere out in those woods that the hill overlooks is the Oda army. Let's have a look for it. Oh, spotted something there. <laughs> a large bright yellow force of the Oda army. Mostly made up of spearmen as was mentioned which uh, makes it well matched against the enemy force which is also made up of spearmen. However we have the small advantage of having some heavy katana cavalry uh, guarding the generals who you can see here uh, with these um, big balloons on their back for stopping arrows which are quite handy as well as having a small division of actual samurai rather than just peasant foot soldiers who we're going to see uh, in a little bit. My strategy was to start splitting off my force into multiple smaller contingents in order to start surrounding this hill. The hill is kind of like a hand in that it has uh, a palm on top where the enemy forces are stationed and many finger-like approaches all around. So I wanted to exploit uh, more than one of these approaches simultaneously, thus I had to split my force. The enemy archers up here are looking down over our force still, uh, we're not within range for them to fire so we're safe, but uh, I needed to be careful uh, about getting too close. Here is the unit of samurai I mentioned, they are Yari Samurai, Masters of the Spear. Now these guys are the most elite fighters in my army at the moment, so I'm going to have to make good use of them if I want to have a victory without too many casualties. Now my uh, second in command general is wandering off there to the towards the west of the map in order to uh, employ a stratagem I had devised. I noticed the enemy's light cavalry was in a uh, position to be drawn off and you'll see whether I achieve that in a moment. So here is the Oda formation in the end. We have spears, then a unit of loosely arranged bows and finally on the extreme right flank a detachment of spears going to attack up this hill here. And if we uh, go up the hill, we can see how the enemy formation is changing to match my new position. They're shuffling back from the approach they had initially guarded in order to guard more than one approach at once. A good strategy, but it also means that uh, my approach of surrounding the hill is beginning to work. I'm beginning to get the initiative, forcing the enemy to make changes based on my movements. Now what really mattered was getting these cavalry off the hill because I didn't want to face them charging downhill and eventually my bait worked. They saw my general going for a walk and decided to charge off in an attempt to snub him while he was away from my forces. Luckily for me they underestimated how fast I could move up my elite spear armed samurai to deal with them. They did catch a few of my general's bodyguards but he managed to get away whereas here the Yari samurai charge in and start unhorsing the enemy light cavalry. Light cavalry are extremely weak against spear units. The spears simply knock them off their horses or kill the horses themselves. So they have little chance and begin to retreat. However, they retreat right into a bank of cliffs and are essentially trapped, meaning my Yari Samurai can pursue and destroy all of those light cavalry. Thus driving the enemy general off the field, which uh, doesn't bode well for the men at the top. Now here you can see I'm moving up 
my main force of Spear Ashigaru up one side of the hill, whereas my detached force is moving up the other side, in order to force the enemy to split themselves up a little bit. Meanwhile, you saw just there, my archers are slowly sniping at the phalanx formations on top, which are so tightly packed that they're going to be very weak against volleys of arrows. Unfortunately, they uh, have a very difficult line of sight and are forced to stop firing as my own troops move up into position. Now, the enemy is in a perfect position to charge down and counter me. They have the hill advantage and they choose to use it. These guys are going to take the brunt of the charge. They pile in with their spear units as arrows fly in, taking out some of the stragglers at the back. So now my men will have to hold out. Meanwhile, on the south side of the hill, uh, my general's units started harassing the enemy archers who for some reason had moved down off the hill. The enemy charges out a unit of spearmen in order to drive my horsemen away. However, this plays to my advantage. The horsemen take up a baiting position and then my Yari Samurai, fresh from destroying the enemy cavalry, move forward and engage with the enemy bowmen in melee. This bowmen will go down very fast against those spears. Meanwhile, I detached another unit of my Ashigaru spearmen to charge down the hill and hit the enemy detachment from the rear. With this victory was assured. <laughs> as my advisor told me at the time. So now all that's left is to kill enough of these enemy troops that they'll decide it's not worth fighting anymore. The rest will surrender and victory will be mine. Let's quickly check up on how things were going uh, over on the other side of the hill. I've surrounded the enemy army here and they're going to fall back. The enemy army on the south side falls back at the same time and thus leading to a victory. So the traitor has been punished and Owari is now unified. Lovely. My right hand man, Takayama Muriyori, commander of the armies of Oda, staked his life to draw out the traitor and hence rid the world of the malodorous stench of Tokushige. It is deeds such as these that make the other lords tremble in their high towers. When battles end, you get a battle report like this, telling you how many men you lost, how many men the enemy lost, and how many men you have remaining. All sorts of uh, useful stats to know. Now, part of the enemy force actually survived the battle and went on to continue resisting down on a beach in southwest Owari. So I marched the army on to finish them. Now, rather than uh, bother myself by mopping up the rest of the enemy troops, I had the computer do it for me by choosing auto resolve conflict. And the result was that I lost just a couple of men and uh, managed to finish off the rest of the enemy army. So now, Owari is truly unified. Mission successful. Missions are things that your uh, the other members of your clan will give to you as the leader to try and achieve. The first one uh, we had at the beginning of the game was to unify Oda, so we've completed that mission. And as a reward, we get increased economic production uh, for the next year. We also saw there that Oda Nobuhide has leveled up. We see that each general next to their little portrait here has an experience bar that goes up as they do various things. Obo Nobuhide's is now empty because he has just gained a level up. One thing you get with some of the levels up is a, a retainer. You can add a retainer to the general to follow them around and give them various bonuses. The bonus I'm picking here gives uh, extra morale to all of my troops. I could have picked having a tiger but uh, it looked like it was less useful, more of a gimmick. You also develop their skills uh, by assigning skill points. I'm putting all of mine into the strategist skill ability, which gives them, uh, I believe, longer campaign movement range so they can walk further per turn, which is quite useful. It also increases the general's influence in battles over the morale of troops, which perhaps I'll talk about in the future for anyone unfamiliar with how the game works. Now I'm going to show you the diplomacy screen. We can see here the outlook of all the other clans uh, towards the Oda clan and uh, details on the deals we have with them. Come, we are currently allied to the Tokugawa. Now I'm going to try and set up a trade deal with the Tokugawa. I have heard that your goods are not of the finest quality. So no, there will be no trade. Unfortunately, they think that the Oda goods are not high enough Come. quality and refuse the trade deal. 
It's not historically accurate for Tokugawa to exist or to be allied to Oda at this stage, but it's a little uh, addition to the game that has been made uh, by a modification in order to help Oda have a more historical time in the long run. So now it's time to move on from spring into summer. We click on the end turn button. Normally we'd see what the other clans are up to, but luckily uh, I don't have much intelligence at the moment on what they're doing. So all we have is a, a quick run through at the top there as all the clans take their turns. Now I've been issued a new mission. Uh, the mission is to master the way of the spear, which is one of the arts I was talking about you could have your samurai study. It says I will be given a unit of Yari Ashigaru if I manage to do this. Well, I'm sure at some point I'll do that, so that mission will be success successful. Now I decided to upgrade my farms with the new income that's come with the new season. And also I started to think about uh, further increasing the size of my army. It all depended what I wanted to do next strategically. It seemed clear to me that the best objective would be to follow history and to march north towards Mino. First I detached my army under the General Takayama in order to scout out the area and I saw that Saito Dosan with only a small force of troops was just standing out in the field. For some reason he had camped outside the castle. Now I thought this is too good of an opportunity to miss and I really should try and uh, exploit the fact he is in a dangerous situation. I do so by simply <laughs> moving my army forward to challenge him. He understandably uh, runs off into the forest and now, even though it was dangerous, I could be being led into an ambush, I decided to move forward and challenge him in the forest. Luckily, it wasn't an ambush. He really was just uh, on his own with no troops. Now, this battle would have been too easy to fight myself, so again, I'm going to use the auto-resolve feature, and it will just kind of tell me what happens afterwards. It was a decisive victory. All of the enemy troops were defeated, including Saito Dosan, the lord of the Saito clan, the Viper of Mino has just been killed in battle. This means the Oda clan's prospects for taking Mino as a province have uh, suddenly risen. Takayama himself actually leveled up as a result of winning the battle, so now I'm going to be able to assign him both a retainer and some skill points in the, uh, the skill tree. It can be hard to read what the retainers actually are. The one on the left makes your bow units more accurate or something, I think. The one on the right increases the loyalty of your general. I decided to use that. The loyalty bar over here is just under their command bar. It's, uh, it represents the chance that they will rebel against you, and you can do various things to make your generals disloyal. It's just something you have to keep in mind when you're playing. As with uh, Nobuhide, I'm going to put all of my skill ability into the strategist ability so that I'll have more maneuverability. The other option there was the warrior ability, which just makes them uh, uh, more effective in battle, which I'm not too interested in. We're now on the next turn. It's autumn of 1545. You saw there that I just mastered the art of Bushido, and I've been given a new mission, which is to capture a province. So uh, Mino seems like as good a place as any. Because I've mastered an art, I'm going to select a new art to master. I'm selecting Way of Chi. The Way of Chi allows you to build marketplaces in your castles, which are extremely useful for gaining money, and something called a Metsuke, which I'll talk about when we see one. Now that my troops have rested for the season, they're able to move on Inabiyama Castle to start laying siege. It has a massive garrison inside, which is approximately equal in strength to my sieging force, which meant it would be very costly to risk an assault right away. Instead, I turn my attention back to Owari, upgrading the stronghold with some of the money I've made over the season and thinking about investing in a few more troops to uh, help out. I realized I could help the siege by simply sending Nobuhide with some of the troops that were recruited during the last season in order to back up the sieging force and I do this by just having them stand nearby. They'll get involved with any action the sieging force encounters. Back in Owari, I begin recruiting units of Yari Samurai so that my army is a little bit more elite even though Oda was famous for its Ashigaru. So now I decided to have my sieging force actually assault the castle itself from all sides. We can see inside the castle here, we have a whole bunch of Mino, uh, Ashigaru and Samurai. They're rushing archers to the wall uh, to counter the direction it looks like I'm approaching from. However, unfortunately for them, I'm actually approaching from so many directions, they're going to have a hard time 
defending each inch of the castle wall. Here on the north side of the castle I have a detachment of uh, two regiments of Ashigaru. In the beginning there we saw on the west side I had two other units of Ashigaru, uh, Yari Ashigaru and some Bo Ashigaru. Here on the east side I have my Yari Samurai, Spear Samurai and a unit of Sword Ashigaru moving up. On the inside the Mino forces are just rushing around attempting to arrange a formation that will best defend against this attack from all sides. On the far south side of the map the reinforcements led by uh, Nobuhide are now marching up onto the field. It's a unit of Spear Ashigaru and a unit of Sword Ashigaru and they're going to be taking care of the south side of the castle. So I'm going to be staging an assault on every face of this castle wall. Here's the castle itself. It has the Tenshu, the large building in the middle, as well as a series of fortifications and walls around the outside, and two gatehouses, which are going to be the weak point. Now I noticed something was awry on the north face and moved out to have a look. Whoa! <laughs> Arrows were flying out from the castle somewhere and sniping some of my men. They weren't dying too fast, but here again we see some guy in the front rank gets pierced right through with an arrow and falls down. Well it turns out the enemy archery tower here had much longer range than I expected. You can see it's launching out arrows towards my ranks. Fortunately it launches them very slowly and not massively accurately. So it's only really chance when it hits my men. Here is the enemy's Katana Dojo Samurai. These men could easily defeat anyone in my army if they really tried. So I had to be quite weary about the presence of these elite enemy forces inside the castle. It was around this time that I decided to begin my full assault on all sides. The division on the west begins to move up, using loosely formed up bowmen to distract the enemy archers on the wall, whereas the rest of my melee troops move in. The units on the south side have a harder time, they have nothing to distract the enemy bowmen with. So as they move up, they're going to be taking arrow volleys from the men on the walls, plus they have the largest wall to get over, so they're going to have the hardest time of all. You can see volleys of arrows flying down. Clouds of blood fly up as the arrows pierce through my men. Luckily, Oda Ashigaru are the best Ashigaru in the land and have higher morale than most common foot soldiers, thus are able to weather such a <laughs> demoralizing situation as running into hails of arrows and then climbing a four-story, almost vertical wall. On the west side you can see my plan was working, my bowmen over here are taking the brunt of the enemy arrows whilst returning fire to suppress them slightly. And my men are moving up, uh, getting close to the gatehouse, they're going to set the gatehouse on fire when they get there, uh, although it happened off camera, you'll see it in a moment anyway. My men on the north face are in position, ready to climb. On the east face the climbing has already begun, I've already burnt down the eastern gatehouse uh, with these swordsmen so they're going to rush in. Meanwhile my samurai have scaled the walls and are jumping over the fortifications. The enemy reply with their own Yari Samurai, thus uh, basically creating a, uh, an even battle. On the south face, uh, all of my troops have now begun to climb in and have started to make some headway inside the castle. The enemy have a, a massive concentration of troops on the southwest side. However, this isn't going to be too helpful for them because I've burned down the southwest gatehouse and now my troops are rushing in. Unfortunately, the first troops they encounter are the enemy katana samurai, the worst things they could possibly want to encounter. They get a little understandably nervous and then uh, the first few men actually die pretty easily. It's a shame, but uh, I have force of numbers on my side so I should be able to beat these guys off and gradually wear down this pocket of enemies. At the same time, all of my general and bodyguards started rushing into the castle in order to capture the Tenshu. In this game, you automatically win a siege battle if you capture uh, the building at the centre of the castle. All you have to do is place units on the flagpost beside it. So that's what my general is doing now. I'm also using the general's special abilities. In the battle, he can uh, have rallying cries and make speeches to inspire his troops. So I'm using those at the moment, shouting at the other guys fighting inside the castle uh, to give them a better chance of surviving. Here we can see I'm facing off with the enemy's bow Ashigaru who have drawn their swords and are now fighting to the death. Not many of them left though. My advisor tells me some of my troops are falling back. Uh, indeed one of my units of sword was so depleted that they actually ran from the castle even though the battle was almost won. Here is the last of the enemy Yari Samurai fighting with uh, my own Samurai and some Yari Ashigaru who came in to back them up. 
Unfortunately, there's uh, just too many for them to hold out. And they are going to die defending their castle. The Saito clan should be proud of them, at the very least. I've now captured the central building, so the battle is won. We see here, in the last moment, I managed to catch a glimpse of the troops who did retreat. They're running off down the hill, ignoring the fact the castle has been captured by us. It is a decisive victory. Oda has claimed a second castle, and once we get back onto the strategy map, we'll be able to see uh, just how many men died in order to capture Inabayama Castle. When I marched against Saito Dosan, I thought my lord was being too hasty, and that our men would suffer an ambush. Instead, the viper was slain, and much sake was enjoyed. But when my lord showed the same haste in climbing the walls of Inabayama, I have never seen such sadness in a victorious army. The battle report is fairly bad. Around two-thirds of our force was destroyed. We lost about the same amount of men as the enemy did. One for one losses. The province is now captured. I have the option to occupy it, to loot it, or to make Saito into a vassal clan. I decided to peacefully occupy. This means my mission to capture any province that I received earlier is successful. My reward is the ability Call to Arms, which means for the next year I'll be able to recruit troops at a faster rate. To my east I now have the Kiso to consider, and to my west the Azai. Which one of them will face the wrath of Odin next? Well, that's a decision to make later. For now, Nobuhide returns to our capital, Nowari. Over at Mino we have some uh, repair to do because the castle is a little bit uh, on fire, apparently, so I uh, fixed it up. The people of Mino are very unhappy about the fact we have just taken control of their province. However, within about a season's time, they will uh, they'll realize that the Oda rule is actually superior and will cease to worry us. That's all for this episode. If you have any feedback, it would be most welcome. I hope you'll join me next time, where we'll see the beginning of the Takata campaign. That's coming up on the Eternal Law.